I'm Mike Breen, Public Awareness Officer for the American Mathematical Society, and I'm talking with the organizers of a mathematics research community. Uh, they are the organizers of week three of 2019, and the uh, method, or excuse me, the uh, topic was explicit methods in arithmetic geometry and characteristic P. Uh, and we're going to start, we're going to really tell us what it's like to organize uh, such a conference or week. Uh, and so uh, first, can we start by everyone introducing themselves? Isabel? Uh, so I'm Isabel Vogt. I just graduated from MIT with my PhD, and I'm going to be an NSF postdoc at Stanford next year. Padma? Okay, I'm Padmavati Srinivasan. I just finished a postdoc at the Georgia Institute of Technology, and I'm starting another postdoc at the University of Georgia in August. Renee? I'm Renee Bell. I'm a Hans Rademacher instructor at the University of Pennsylvania, and next year I will be for one year at University Paris Sud. Uh, uh, and Valentine? I'm Valentine Gardemacher. I well, am uh, currently a postdoc at the University of Pennsylvania and I'm moving to Utrecht in the Netherlands next year. And Julia? My name is Julia Hartman. I'm a professor at the University of Pennsylvania. And Julia, can you tell us uh, what drew you to uh, wanting to organize an MRC? Yeah, it all started with an email that I received from the um, AMS MRC Advisory Board in October 2017 that said that they were trying something new and potentially experimental that they wanted to have younger people, more early career people, organize MRCs. And I thought that was a great idea. And it said to forward this to people who might be in that career stage. And of course, I thought immediately of Valentine, who was my postdoc at the time already, working with me. And so I forwarded the email to her, ran over to her office, and said, we should really do this. So. Yeah, and then we quickly got this great team together. Um, We'd met at conferences before, and we some of us had experience with collaborative conferences already um, at AIM or at Women in Numbers or at the Arizona Winter School. And we were all very excited to organize um, or design an activity like that uh, on a theme that we're all very interested in. Um, so we decided to do that together. And also being an all-female organizing team, um, we felt strongly about having a lot of women at our conference, and we aimed for 50%, and we, we achieved that too. Um, moreover, we had some other ideas. We shared a vision on how we wanted to create this like, really welcoming um, atmosphere, and we had ideas on how to do that too. Uh, and so, Padma, what is it like putting it together? So, we tried to design the whole week thinking about what we would find most be beneficial as early career mathematicians. So, like maybe limited panels, more hands on activities, and like meeting with senior advisors in small groups. Um, one of the biggest strengths that we felt about our proposal was the number of senior people who enthusiastically and generously volunteered their time and, and their ideas. And this, this was a new thing for many of us. Like, it gave us an opportunity to interact with these well-established mathematicians as peers, and this was an empowering experience. Yeah. Um... So in order to create a diverse and welcoming community, we had to make sure that we threw a very wide net in our advertising for the conference. So uh, we worked very hard on that. Uh, we used many different channels. Uh, one of the main channels was um, emailing out the networks that already exist in the areas of this conference. Um, so that uh, the AMS had some great uh, networks uh, for that. Uh, we, we wrote an article in the notices, so that uh, went out to the AMS members. Uh, but we also wanted to make sure that we got people from underrepresented communities, so we emailed out uh, listservs for women in math, uh, we posted things to the NAM website and the NAM newsletter, um, and uh, that was all good, but it really only reaches people who are already connected to that community. So we also made a very strong point of emailing particular people. And I think I would like to say that you shouldn't be afraid to cold email uh, potential participants who might be interested because that encouragement of getting a specific email can make a lot of difference. So that was sort of the advertising. And I think that all paid off um, because we had a very strong applicant pool. And so then we had to transition into um, selecting strong participants from our very strong applicant pool. And um, because we wanted a strong and, and cohesive group of people, we wanted to make sure that we really had a diverse group of people. So we looked for diversity along many different 
um, parameters. We wanted to make sure that we had gender diversity, which Valentine already mentioned. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we had um, diversity in the type of institution that people came from, uh, not just big research uh, universities, but also small liberal arts colleges. Um, we wanted to make sure that we had a diversity in the stage of graduate career. So we wanted to make sure that we had um, some uh, middle of graduate school, early grad school students, uh, some people who were about to finish or just finished, and some postdocs and even a couple of um, new soon-to-be professors. And um, we also tried to have ethnic diversity uh, among our participants, which is something that I think we could improve upon. Um, and so uh, I think it's up to you now, Julia. Uh, how is a, an MRC uh, different from other conferences? Yeah, so the, the biggest and most obvious sort of difference to other conferences is that you'll really be spending the majority of the time on research work in groups. And that was, for us, a thing that we had to plan around, and it was, it was really sort of the biggest cha challenge and the biggest change from experiences that we've had before at other conferences where you go to talks and you sit and you listen. And it's, it also is very demanding on the participants because they're supposed to be very active the entire time and working. Yeah, and I'd like to add some things to that. Another thing that was different in the program is that we spent a lot of time on professional development. Um, because our participants were all early stage career mathematicians, we had four different activities planned for them. But on top of that, um, not only the program or the day-to-day -day things of the conference are different, but hopefully also what the participants take away from it is, is different. As Julia said, everyone has been very active at this conference and we hope that everyone feels like they, they really learned stuff and also felt heard and got to share their own thoughts. And then afterwards we hope that this means that they feel like very empowered, that they feel part of a network or that they've expanded their network a lot and that this can really um, bring them a lot of good in their their future careers. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Padma, I think it's your turn now. Any advice for future organizers, MRC organizers? I think I'd start by saying that the amount of time uh, and thought we put into our first proposal, draft of our proposal, went a long way. We more or less more or less stuck to what we had in our first proposal. It was then just a matter of nailing down the details. So I think that, that effort went a long way. Um, another thing I would say is, even after all your plans, it's really a great idea to just check in on your participants constantly several times through the week. Even with five of us, not all of us could be at the, like, everywhere at the same time. And we wanted to make sure that every single one of our participants has the best experience ever. Oh. So we tried, tried, tried our best. Um, okay. Yeah, um, so I also want to add that I highly advise that um, future organizers keep in mind that including people from underrepresented groups is an urgent issue um, and to prioritize it and really hold your ground on making a commitment to being as inclusive as possible and as Isabel, Isabel said, um, reaching out personally to people we found to be one of the more effective um, techniques for that. Um, generally lowering barriers to any kind of participation um, getting over if people have certain social anxieties, so something that we found helpful to ensure that people mingle and like actually get to interact with the other people without having to initiate too much of that ourselves um, was that, or themselves, was that um, lunch was people could choose their own tables to sit at and socialize with their existing groups, and dinner, the seating was randomized so people could get to meet new people without having to go up to them personally if they felt a little unsure about themselves. Um, we also had a lot of anonymous uh, participation, so we had a lot of polls open um, so that people could submit questions anonymously, especially if they had questions about something that was a little delicate subject, um, like what to do if something is going wrong in a collaboration, which may, be, may indicate something about another participant, but we wanted people to feel free to ask questions or even submit something that they were uncomfortable about with um, anonymously. Um, so I highly advise that future advisors do that as well. Um, something else that was very successful for us was um, we, at the end of each day, had the participants consolidate their progress for the day on paper um, in a way that was organized by um, position, obstruction, 
and direction, so pod. Um, so the position is um, where they are in their research, um, where they are in their project, the progress that they've just made on the problem. Um, obstruction is something that's kind of just in the way of, that's really uh, an obstacle for them to uh, get over. And direction is where they want to go next in their project, maybe even a, a, interpreted possibly a little broadly. Um, and so displaying these in the dining area, um, other people perused the pods of different groups and were able to learn um, what the other groups were working on and possibly offer suggestions, especially with obstructions that people were having. Um, and it also was very helpful for groups in terms of our own organization to summarize our work like this. Some of our participants even told us that they would like to use this for organizing their own research in the future. Um, so that was really successful for us and highly recommend something at least similar for future MRCs. Yeah, th those three organizing principles were really nice. Did you come up with that on your own? Or was that something you borrowed from someone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's why you got to talk about it. Yeah, you? so um, from her past experiences, um, Julia had seen people at least writing, like people writing and displaying progress on their work. And I tried to make it as compact and uh, catchy as possible. Um, so people really got into the pod. Uh, I feel as mathematical, if I may add, I feel um, if we are able to express where we stuck, Clearly, that is already progress in towards the next step. So I think it's really helpful to think back and reflect every so often. And given that the MRC only lasts one week, we really wanted to make sure that this happens. We consciously wanted to make it happen. Well, it was a great week. You did a great job, and the participants were, were very enthusiastic the whole time. And uh, just speaking from behind the camera here, I know that all the organizers, they came in uh, hyper, and it wasn't because of the coffee and the afternoon break. Uh, it, was, it, was, uh, Julie, it was because uh, you just had the group presentations, and they all were really fantastic, right? Yeah. An amazing amount of mathematics for one week. Yes. Yeah. Well, congratulations, and good job putting it all together, and thanks very much for taking the time to talk to me. I know you're very busy. Uh, so that's uh, uh, Julia, uh, Valentine, Renee, uh, Padma, and Isabel, and they were the organizers for week three in 2019 here of the mathematics research community, uh, arithmetic geometry, explicit methods in arithmetic geometry and characteristic P. Uh, thanks very much, and nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.